How many have you forgiven today? Chapter 2, Part 2. You seem like a different pony, Luna says with a raised brow. Was your visit truly something so grand? Celestia nods. I haven't felt this good in a long time, Luna. She blushes some. I had these silly thoughts that Anand and I would be back at square one in our friendship, but it's like nothing has ever changed between us. In fact, he's far more open and public with his affection. Luna nods. I have noticed this as well when I visited him. Since the day that we punished those that have wronged him, Anand seems to be an entirely different person. Celestia thinks back to when she mentions Twilight. Yet, he's still the same. She lets out a sigh. Luna can sense that something's bothering her sister. What is it that ails you? She asks. Celestia looks at the floor. Anand invited us to a party. It seems that for the past few weeks he's been training employees to run a store, so he wishes to celebrate this turn of events. That sounds wonderful! I try to invite Twilight to the party. Luna goes silent at that. She doesn't need to hear any more to know what happened. She also can't fault Anand for denying her sister, as Anand's life and he can pick and choose whom he lets into it. Sister? Luna calls out. Do you know what Anand told me? Celestia looks up at her sister, curiosity in her eyes. What did he tell you? Luna hates to say this, but it needs to be said. It's the only way to make her sister understand. He told me that there was no Nightmare Twilight. Celestia feels her heart skip a beat. It was Twilight doing those horrible things to him. No pony else. Celestia feels herself gulp some as she replays those words in her head. That's hurt deeply. It hurt her because it makes sense. Luna wasn't the pony that did all those horrible things, as much as it may sound like a cop-out. But Luna and Nightmare Moon were two different ponies. True. Nightmare Moon may have spawned from her sister's emotions, but the horrible things done after that were not choices made by her sister. However, Anana's right. The things that hurt him the most weren't done by some magically induced alter ego, it was Twilight and her friends. Nothing more than that. If he doesn't want to forgive, then that's his choice. Luna says firmly. Celestia looks at her sister. How can you say that? Do you not wish for the ponies to forgive you? I've done nothing wrong. If they forgive me for what another pony has done, then they truly never understood to begin with. Celestia looks to her sister in surprise. You aren't the only pony that can take advice from Anon. Celestia doesn't have an argument for that. Anon is such a stark contrast when compared to normal ponies. Yet what he does is purely logical. Almost to the point of being cruel. Still, she can't deny what her sister says, as much as she would wish for all ponies to come out of this feeling happy. She also knows that some scars will remain too deep for healing. She's truly sorry for what she did, Celestia says, and Luna nods. Her nightmares are enough to confirm that, yet that does little to mend a wound as large as Anand's. Luna gets out of the throne and walks up to her sister. You have seen your friend. Do not sour this day with trivial thoughts. Luna's right. Celestia feels great after having spent time with Anon. Wasting it away with negative thoughts will only make her feel worse. She closes her eyes to help clear her thoughts. Once she opens them up, does she feel better? It's time for Twilight's training. Celestia informs her sister. Anon should be here for dinner. Luna nods. I have a few things to take care of. Day court should be done for the moment. Celestia nuzzles her sister briefly, then turns to head over to the library. She has a feeling her students will be there. She always is. Twilight is clutching desperately to the ladder that she's standing on. Each shaky step up seems to take hours, but is actually only a few seconds between each step. As soon as she's at the spot she needs to be, does she shakily use one of her hooves to reach over to one of the books that she needs? Her breaths are labored, as her fear of heights starts to kick in. With a quick grab, does she get the book in her hooves? She returns her death grip on the ladder as she takes a few steady breaths to calm her nerves. What are you doing? The sudden voice is enough to make Twilight let go of the ladder. Her hooves flail in a useless attempt to grab the step that she just let go of. It happens quickly as she hits the ground on her back with a noticeable thud. Twilight groans a bit from the fall. Her vision is a little blurry, but it comes back into focus as she notices Spike by her side. Are you okay? He asks, with concern in his eyes. She nods as she sits up, and rubs the back of her head some. Yeah, just a little bump. Spike lets out a sigh of relief, knowing that he didn't hurt Twilight. What were you doing? He asks. Twilight shakily gets back up on her hooves, as she walks over and picks up the book that she got. With practiced ease, does she turn her head with the book in her mouth and places it onto her back. I finally found the book I've been looking for. Twilight says as she walks over to her study. Why didn't you ask me to get it for you? I'm not a filly, Spike. I can get my own book. We wouldn't have that much of a problem if you took off that ring. He says with irritation. Twilight looks up to the ring that's still on her horn. A month ago, Shining tried to take it off of her. Twilight refused. She doesn't think that her punishment was harsh enough. 
so she decided that she was going to wear this magic dampening ring until Anon forgave her. I'm not taking it off, Spike. She says with finality, and he lets it off. Fine, it's not like I'm the one falling on my face. Twilight shakes her head. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be sending another letter to Rarity? Spike looks sadly to the floor. She hasn't responded to any of my letters yet. I'm worried. Twilight is worried as well. Applejack told her that she's taking care of things and she shouldn't worry any. From what she hears, Rarity has locked herself away. Rainbow has disappeared and Pinky's happy but no longer throwing parties. As for Fluttershy, well, Fluttershy surprisingly coped well with what's been happening. Sure, her first few weeks in Canterlot were hard on her, but over time she started to see the bright side of things. Celestia told Fluttershy that she could return home whenever she wanted, and it didn't take very long for the ponies in the passive magic department to categorize and even train Fluttershy how to control her power. Fluttershy still hasn't left though. Twilight once asked her as to why she hadn't gone home yet, and her answer was simple. I haven't seen Anan yet. Twilight still sees her every now and then around the castle. She spends most of her time in the gardens with the animals. Twilight shakes those thoughts away. She needs to concentrate. She's fine. Twilight tries to comfort Spike, and he chuckles nervously. Yeah, you're right. No need to worry. It's not like she's cried so much that she became dehydrated because no pony was there to give her water, so she ended up passing out and now needs help. Right? Twilight looks at Spike with a raised brow. I doubt it. But it can happen? No. But if it did- Spike. Twilight rests a hoof on his shoulder. Rarity is fine. He nods. Yeah, definitely. I'm just being silly. Why don't you head on to the kitchen and have some pony make you something? That's a good idea. I haven't eaten yet. Do you want anything? Twilight shakes her head. I'm fine, Spike. Spike doesn't say anything as he heads towards the door. If there's one good thing about what's happened, it's that it has to be the fact that Celestia has a large storage of gems for Spike to eat. Spike is about to open the door to the library, but it comes flying open past his face. Celestia looks down to see Spike, standing there. Hello, Spike. Is Twilight here? Spike nods. She's by her study. Spike notices that the princess seems different today. Is she glowing? It seriously looks like she has a faint glow coming off of her body. He just shakes it off as a trick of the mind. Thank you. I'm to assume that you're getting something to eat? He nods eagerly. Yeah, it's been awesome eating gems regularly. Celestia brushes one of her wings over his head in a petting motion. Anything for my Spikey. Spike can't fight the swell of feelings in his heart. Then again, Celestia's kind of been like a mom to him and Twilight his sister. It's only natural to feel the way that he is at such attention. He giggles to himself as he runs past her and towards the kitchen. Celestia feels her smile grow at his action. She must say that she was rather heartbroken to see how sad he was when he had to leave Ponyville. No matter, he's been getting better as time passes. Celestia focuses herself back to her task. She walks deeper into the library. Chances are Twilight will be at her usual seat. It's not hard to find her, seeing as the table she used was located at the center. Celestia finds Twilight already focused on whatever book she's looking at. Celestia walks up to Twilight and quietly takes a seat next to her. She leans slightly over her so she can see what she's reading. Interesting. Twilight is reading about how to make amends. This isn't unusual. On her off time, Twilight usually spends all of her time trying to find a way to gain Anon's forgiveness. How are you feeling? Celestia asks. Twilight flinches at the voice. She quickly looks over to see her teacher sitting beside her. Oh, I'm sorry, Princess, I didn't hear you enter. Twilight tries to get up to bow, but Celestia holds a hoof up. No need to get up, Twilight. Twilight remains seated as Celestia looks at her book again. Learn anything? She asks, and Twilight shakes her head. Nothing yet. Do you wish to continue your training? It's not like Twilight got far in her book. She might as well start learning from the princess. She wouldn't want to waste her time. Yeah. Celestia gives a nod at that as she rises from her seat and walks over to a particular bookshelf. She pulls a book out and levitates it in front of Twilight. Body language? Twilight questions aloud as she looks at the title. Celestia nods. It's important. Every creature that calls this planet home uses at least some style of body language. You, me, and even Anon. Twilight seems to brighten at that. Does this book have any information that I can use about Anon? Celestia shakes her head. It does not. Even trying to reference what you learned from this book towards him will only get you into trouble. Get me into trouble? Twilight asks, confused. Celestia sets the book on the table and walks in front of Twilight. Twilight watches as her teacher stands in front of her with a blank expression. The other thing she notices is that her tail keeps twitching from left to right in a jerky motion. What's she doing? Twilight has never seen a pony do this before. What do I feel? Celestia asks, giving no clues from her tone. 
Twilight feels her mind trying to pick out what she's doing, but it again comes up as nothing. It looks reminiscent of something ponies do, but yet not even close. She doesn't even know what to say. I, I, I don't know. Twilight admits. Guess. Twilight feels her face turn red. Mating? Celestia feels her mask fall at that answer. She can't help the small chuckle that comes from her as she shakes her head. No, Twilights. That looks a bit like this. Celestia's tail movements become smoother as they sweep largely from left to right. Not only that, but she even adds a sway to her hips. Twilight can feel her face redden more as she watches her teacher do this. Celestia chuckles again as she returns to the original movements. Care to guess again? Twilight shakes her head. No, I'm irritated. What I was doing is common with griffins. Twilight nods her head slowly. Guess this is just another thing that she doesn't know. A sad sigh leaves her at that thought. So many things that she thought were right are now being challenged. Still, she's not going to give up. This is why you should never reference body language. Celestia adds. A normal smile to one creature may be considered an insult to another. Then how would I approach a creature like a nun? Twilight asks. Celestia feels her features soften. Even I cannot answer that. There is still so much about Anon that I do not understand. I can only be thankful for the small connection that I can make with him to know when he's stressed or not. Without that, I would be just as blind as you. Twilight nods her head slowly. If it was going to be easy, then she would have been done months ago. Twilight looks up to her teacher with a certain fire in her eyes. Show me more. Celestia feels her smile return at her student's continued enthusiasm. All right. Try telling me what I'm feeling now. It's good to see that she's actually trying instead of just doing it for the hell of it, or just to make her teacher happy. Anywho, let's get on to our fabulous donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and only one thing. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Guy 557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mortred, Omicron Library, Will Chris, Twinkie, Hadzaza, Dospo, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.